<clears throat> hey my reactors so i'm back again with kendrick um this um head is the fight chapter one we never really moved in together kevin and i i had a sardine can size apartment on crenshaw boulevard and he had a bigger one on olympic not too far away we both had bookshelves and stacks and boxes and crowded out the furniture Together, we would never have fitted into either of our apartments. Kevin did suggest once that I get rid of some of my books so that I have fit into his place. You're out of your mind, I told him. Just some of the books club stuff that you don't read. We were at my apartment then, so I said, let's go to your place and I'll help you decide which part, which of your books you don't read. I'll even get you help. I'll even help you throw them away. He looked at me and signed, but he didn't say anything. We just sort of drift back and forth between our two apartments, and I got less sleep than ever. But it didn't even say. It, but it didn't seem to bother me as much as it had before. Nothing seemed to bother me much. I didn't love the agency now, but on the other hand, I didn't kick the furniture in the in the morning anymore either. Quit. Kevin told me, I'll help you until you find a better job. If I hadn't already loved him by then, then what? That would have been, done it. But I didn't quit. The independence, the independence the agents gave me was shaky, but it was real. It would hold me together until my novel was finished and I was ready to look for something more demanding. When that time came, I could walk away from the agency not on anybody. My memory of aunt and uncle my memory of my aunt and uncle told me that even people who love me could demand more of me than I could give and expect their demands to be met simply because I owe them. I knew Kevin was in that way. The situation was completely different, but I kept my job. Then about four months after we met, Kevin said, how would you feel about getting married? I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was. You want to marry me? Yeah, don't you want to marry me? He grinned. I let you type all my manuscripts. I was drying out dinner dishes just then, and I threw the dish towel at him. He really had, had asked me to do some typing for him three times. I done it the first time, grudgingly not telling him how much I hated typing. How I did all but the final draft of my stories in long hand. That was why I was with a blue collar agency instead of a white collar agency. The second time he asked, though, I told him and I refused. He was annoyed. The third time when I refused again, he was angry. He said if I couldn't do him a little favor when he asked, I could leave. So I went home. When I rang his doorbell the next day after work, he looked surprised. Oh, you came back. Did you want me to? Well, sure. Will you type those pages for me? No. Damn it, Dana. I still wait for him to either shut the door or let me in. He let me in. And now he wanted to marry me. I looked at him, just looked for a long moment. Then I looked away because I couldn't think while I was watching him. You um don't have any relatives or anything who will give you a hard time about me, you do you? As I spoke, it occurred to me that one of the reasons his proposal surprised me was that we had never talked much about our families, about how his, about how his will react to me and mine to him. I haven't been aware of us avoiding the subject, but somehow we never gotten around to to do it. Even now, he looks surprised. The only close relative I got left is my sister, he said. She's been trying to murder me off and get me settled down for years. She'll love you. Believe me. I didn't quite. I hope she does, I said. But I'm afraid my aunt and uncle won't love you. He turned to face me. No. I shrug. They're old. Sometimes their ideas don't have very much to do with what's going on now. I think they're still waiting for me to come to my senses and move back home and go to secretary school. Are we going to get married? I went to him. You know damn well we are. You want me to go with you when you talk to your aunt and uncle? No. Go talk to your sister if you want to. Brace yourself, though. She might surprise you. She did. Embrace or not, he wasn't ready for a sister reaction. I thought I knew her, he told me afterward. I mean, I did know her, but I guess we lost touch more than I thought. What did she say? 
that she didn't want to meet you, wouldn't have you in her house, or me either if I married you. He leaned back on a shabby purple sofa that had come with my apartment and looked up at me. And she said a lot of other things you don't want to hear about. I believe you. He shook his head. The thing is, there's no reason for her to react this way. She didn't even believe the garbage she was handing me or get sh or getting used used to. It's as a, it's 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 <laughs> it's as though you she was quoting someone else. Her husband probably little bastard. I used to try to like him for her sake. Her husband is prejudiced. Prejudice. Her husband would have made a good nasal, nay nazi nazi. She used to joke about it, though never when he could hear. But she married him. That's her racial. She could have married almost anybody. He smiled a little. In high school, she and this, this friend of hers spent all their time together because neither neither of them could get a boyfriend. The other girl was black and fat and homie, and Carol was white and fat and homie. Half the time, we couldn't figure out whether she lived at the girl house or the girl lived with us. My friends knew them both, but they were too young for them. Carol three years older than I am. Anyway... She and the girl sort of comfort each other and fell off their dives together and planned to go to the same college so they wouldn't have to break up their partnership. The other girl really went in, but Carol changed her mind and trained to become a dental assistant. She winded up marrying the first dentist she ever worked for, a smug little reactionary 20 year older than she is. Now she lives in a big house in La Canada and quote clinches bigotry at me for wanting to murder you. I shrugged, not knowing what to say. I told you so, Harley. My mother car broke down in La Canada once, I told him. Three police called the po three people called the police. <clears throat> called the police on her while she was waiting for my uncle to come and get her. Suspicious character. Five three she was. Almost a hundred pounds, real dangerous. Sounds like the reactionary moved to the right town. I don't know. That was back in 1960. Just before my mother died, things may have been have improved by now. What did your aunt and uncle say about me, Dana? I looked at my hands thinking about all they had to say. Paring it down wearily, I think my aunt accepts the idea of my marrying you because any children we, we have will be light, lighter than I am anyway. She always said I was a little too high visible. He stirred at me. You see? I told you they were old. She doesn't care much for white people, but she preferred light-skinned blacks. Figure that out. Anyway, she forgives me for you, but my uncle doesn't. He's sort of taking this personally. Personally? How? He, well, his mother, my oldest, well, he, well, I mean, he, well, he's my mother's oldest brother, and he was like a father to me even before my mother died because my father died when I was a baby. Now it's as though I rejected him, or at least that's the way he feels. It bothers me, really. He was more hurt than mad. Honestly hurt. I had to get away from him. But he knew you were married someday. How could a thing as natural as that be a rejection? I'm marrying you. I reached up and twisted a few strands of his straight gray hair between my fingers. He wants me to marry someone like him. Someone who looks like him. A black man. Oh. I was already close to him. He said my aunt wanted kids and they couldn't have any. I was their kid and now. Now? Well, they have a couple of apartments, houses over in Pan Pasadena. Small places but nice. The last thing my uncle said to me was that he rather, he rather will them to his church than leave them to me and see them fall into white hands. I think that was the worst thing he could have think of to do to me, or he thought it was the worst thing. Oh, hell, mother, Kevin. Look, are you sure you still want to marry me? Yes, I wish. Never mind, just, just yes, definitely yes. Then let's go to Vegas and pretend we had, hadn't got relatives. So we drove to Los Angeles, got married, and gambled away a few dollars. When we came home to our bigger new apartment, we found a gift, a blender from my best friend, and a check from the... Atlantic waiting for us. One of our, one of my stories has finally made it. And I will be back with chapter two of the fights.